Hey, blessings everyone. This is Malik Ali here with Rebranding Time, formerly known as Inner Life Restoration. Wherever you are in the world, I just wanted to say thank you so much for tuning in. I've recently found out that there's people from different parts of the world like Uganda, Sri Lanka, America, South America. And though it's a growing channel, right? It's just amazing to see that people from around the nations are tuning in. That's really awesome which means all these regions are being impacted by the power of this word. And if this word has impacted your life, transformed your life, grown your understanding on who you are and this great God that loves us, then please make sure you share this word, not so the channel can get famous, but Christ can get famous, right? That God can continue to get famous and transform people, right? What I'm really standing for is the true doctrines of Jesus Christ. The doctrines that the body of Christ needs to grow in unity, love, integrity, honor, maturity. And that's the message that we're diving deep into today. It's about unity. It's about love. It's about integrity and honor. And how that's actually going to lead up to seeing Christ again, right? For Christ to come back again, it has been preached on a massive level that it is the Great Commission being fulfilled. Once the Great Commission is fulfilled, and I'll go deeper into that as we get into the message for today, that once that's fulfilled, Christ is going to come again. Is that really the case? Is that really what the Bible describes? Or is there something in plain sight that perhaps has been missed? And you know what? I love the body of Christ. I love all churches, all leaders. I love every spiritual uh, belief system and background because I love and I honor people. But we're going to get a chance to look at truth today. So open up your hearts to receive, right? And allow the Holy Spirit to really confirm the things that I'm sharing with you by a manifestation of the glory of God. That's what the Bible says that, you know, don't just preach the word, right? But the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to come upon people as I'm sharing this message by the presence, by tangible uh, proof of perhaps healing that you need, right? Perhaps a shift in your nervous system for joy, right? Instead of anxiety, fear, depression, whatever it is, you're going to feel completely transformed just by this word. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for doing it. Okay, cool. So we know what we're talking about today. Love, integrity, honor, and how that, if the body of Christ can grow into that, Versus focusing on just the Great Commission. And don't get me wrong, I love the Great Commission, right? Of making disciples of all nations. That's what it is. I live for that. That's a part, a major part of what I do. But is that the key to see Christ come on the earth again, right? For us to come into a new age in a new era. Is that is that what we're waiting for? Wouldn't you be excited to find out if that's actually the truth? Let's look into it, right? So I actually... Uh, received this message from the Lord earlier this year. It's 2022 right now, and uh, it's uh, October. I received this around January, right, of this year. And every time I've shared it, it's been really amazing to see what God has done within the midst. And now I'm making it, um, you know, available to people from all around the world on this YouTube channel. Before, when I was invited to churches, to church uh, gatherings, I would share it in that context, but this is the first time it's going on uh, public broadcast, right? So this is really exciting. Let's get into it. Lord, thank you for blessing this message. Thank you for your glory that's here right now. Thank you that everywhere that people are hearing this message, that your glory is coming upon them right now, that heavy kabod glory where they can feel it. It's resting on their shoulders just like it is mine right now. Whoa! <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you for a manifestation of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Peace, love, joy, happiness right now coming upon people. Right now, Lord, bless them. Right now, right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for your third heaven angels coming within their midst, oh great God. Whoa, thank you for just expanding the revelatory portals over their homes, over their regions, Father God. Wherever they're listening to this, that it would be broadcasted to families, to individuals, to church, 
to churches, O oh great God, that they would begin to catch a hold of this revelation and that there would be a reformation on how we see what you could call the end times. One day I'm going to share a message on that. Bless you, bless you, bless you. So love and unity is the key for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father God began highlighting the utmost importance of this to me about, uh, you know, January, as I was saying, of 2022. Let's go through this revelation together and allow yourself to experience this in its entirety without judging it, right? And so that's, that's key. A lot of the things that I share, they might challenge what you've originally been taught, what's perhaps a part of your foundation, but withhold judgment until I share the message and just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Test it, you know, allow the Lord to confirm it. Don't let the biases of the past establish whether this is right or wrong. Eat from the tree of life and not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, okay? Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Thank you for releasing the spirit of wisdom and revelation upon those who are experiencing this word right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Again, I love the church of Jesus Christ with all my heart. Does the church love each other though? That's a really good question. Does the church love each other? Has the church really painted that picture well of loving each other across denominational backgrounds? I mean, do we stand united with our brothers and sisters from every denomination? Catholics, Baptists, Lutherans, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, etc. Perhaps I've left some out, right? Why is this important to press into? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, until we reach unity. Whoa. Did you hear that? Until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. This passage is highlighting that something will take place when the entire church of Jesus Christ reaches unity of the faith. Right? Because it's saying, until. So, once we reach the unity, that until of what's going to happen gets revealed. Are you with me? This is really exciting, man. I know this message, right? The Lord revealed this to me personally. But every time I get a chance to dive into this, right? And share it in the depth of how it was given to me. I get so excited. Oh my God. It's the Lord's excitement for this message to get out. <laughs> What I feel the Holy Spirit has placed on my heart is that we will see our precious Lord Jesus Christ come back to the earth when the church of Jesus Christ comes into the unity on the foundation of love. You see, God is love. That's what it says in 1 John chapter 4, 16. That's our foundation, the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, will I find faith on the earth? In Luke 18, verse 8. To have faith is to love. You see, faith is the portal to love. As the Holy Spirit spoke through the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. What our mysterious creator Jesus Christ is saying is not, will I find faith on the earth? Will I find love on the earth? You see, when Christ came on the earth over 2,000 years ago, the beginning portion of his ministry and his message was focused on a few different things, but faith was a key element, right? He kept highlighting faith because by faith he was doing the works, right? That he was showing others that heaven is here. The kingdom is here now, right? It's come upon you. These works are showing you. I'm doing these by faith right now towards the latter part of his ministry on earth right that three-year period in which he was active in ministry he started to talk about love and the emphasis moved away from faith and began to illuminate what love really is because he was going to the cross he was on his way to go to the cross and said now i can begin to teach them what love is about right faith, hope, and love, but out of the greatest of these is love. Because when Christ went on that cross and 
gave himself as a sacrifice to pay off my debts, my sins, and what I owed other people, right? Kirby Delanerville, my pastor at Wildlife Church, has shared that revelation, and it's completely revolutionized the way I see the great gift of God. It's expanded the gift of Christ that he's given to all of us as man. The things that I've done to other people, right? I used to sell drugs, right? Man, I've lied, manipulated, cheated, stole, all that stuff. God has paid them back for what I have done. Not just paid my debts, but Father, forgive us our debts as we forgive the debts of others. I've prayed to the Lord for their, for the debts that I owed them to be forgiven and he has restored them. But you see, that's love. Initially, Christ preached about faith and other aspects of the kingdom as well and uh, being able to attain salvation. But the message about love came towards the latter part, right? And so, will I find faith on the earth, the Lord is saying. is He's really saying, will I find love on the earth? Faith, hope, and love, but out of the greatest of these is love. Majority of the Christian circles Focus on the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20, right? Matthew 28, verse 16 through 20. I agree with the Lord's commandment to go and make disciples of all nations. But we must also see the full scope of what he has commanded us to do. You see, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 39 through 40, it says, Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. That's really powerful, right? So as we look in John chapter 13, verse 34, it says, A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. This is a lot of love scripture. I love it. All right, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, it says, Now the goal of our instruction is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. That's the goal of our instruction is love. It's saying it clear right there, the goal of our instruction, the goal, the finish line, love, unity, integrity, honor. A dear brother, Chris Woolley, he had mentioned this scripture, and when he did, it came alive in my life like never before. I said, whoa, I see that real clearly now. And so bless you, Chris. Love you, man. Thank you so much for the heart that you carry and the truth that you understand. And that we're always obtaining more truth as we move through our journey, right? That's, should, that should be all of our goal. Everyone's goal is God review more. Let me experience more, right? It's clear. God is love and he has commanded us to love as he loves. Which means we can find things to be unified on. We're going to see differences for sure, right? But what do we have in common? How can we focus on the unity? That's the key. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 to 23, it says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, the Lord says, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Wow. Why would the Lord say that to his disciples? Because they didn't do it with him. You see, they didn't do it in love. We can still love someone that we do not agree with. Is it always easy? Yes and no. Initially, no, but as you exercise that muscle of love, then yes. If you choose to love, even when it's hard, it gets easier because you see the beauty that they're carrying. You see what's so precious about them that Christ is in all and through all. That's what it says in the book of Ephesians, right? And so when I focus on love and unity and integrity and honor where it's available to see, to experience, to grasp on that perspective for the individual or situation in front of me, it becomes easier. I laid all this groundwork to share. We must unite with every denomination that confesses Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We're not against each other. We're for each other, right? Even Jesus said to one of his disciples, 
uh, who was making a complaint. Hey, there's another guy who's driving out demons in your name and he's not with us, right? Should we go against him? The Lord said, no, if he's not against us, he's for us. Even the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians describes some preach Christ out of the pure intentions of their heart, right? And some for the impure intentions. And he says, but what do I care? Christ is being preached. He focused on the unity, right? There's power in unity. There's power in focusing on love, right? And we're continuously unfolding this layer by layer. Get excited. There's more, right? Hallelujah. There's always more. And you see, no matter what we do for the kingdom of God, how many miracles, how many people we serve, disciples we make, if we're not loving to the full extent and measure of what God has given us, He's not seeing it. It's not really valuable, right? It's not really being accounted unto us, right? And I've, I've personally had the Lord tell me things like that when I've done ministry together with other people. And the Lord said, Son, if you don't do things in a way that it's in unity, integrity, honor, and love, I won't count any of the things that you're doing. And I said, this is crazy, Lord. Like, are you serious right now? The Lord said, yes. I was even in, uh, I'm going to share a quick story and I'll get back into the, to the message. I was even sharing, or I was even in a state and I was doing work with a dear brother of mine and he was originally called, right, to be discipled, right, to be poured into by me. He even confessed that with his own mouth that, man, yeah, I'm supposed to be guided by you, right? You have wisdom. I'm supposed to receive it from you so I can carry out my calling and my purpose. That's an amazing honor that God had given me. I'm like, God, speak through me and to me to bless this person, you know. I want to make sure they're getting what you're wanting to impart to them. And so, but towards the time when we were getting ready to go and do this work together, things began to shift and change. And in, in what was happening was he was becoming rebellious, you know, kind of wanting to just do his own thing and avoiding the direction that was being set out before us. And let me see if I can improve the lighting because I think it got a little bit darker. I want to make sure you're having a good experience, yeah? Okay, I think that's better. Hey, okay. So I wanted to make sure, right, that at least I will fulfill what God has called me to fulfill while I'm in this state, right? In the United States of America, I was in a specific state. And I said, Lord, I know he's wanting to go in this direction, but that's not what you're revealing. Let me just, you know, kind of part ways in a sense and continue on. So the work that you've called me to do will come to suffice, right? Will come to fruition. And the Lord said, son, if you do anything in this time without being in a place of unity, integrity, and in love with your brother, none of this stuff will be accounted to you. It was more important that I focus on this relationship with my homie, right? With my brother in Christ than all of the work I could have done for the kingdom. I said, wow, this is amazing. This is who this God is, right? This is the focus. And so I focused on that, right? Of, okay, we're going to find a way to make it work. You know, we got to be in the ebb and flow. This is what the Lord desires. And so many great things came to happen. This message was able to go forth during that season and release so much glory over people's lives, man. Like the holy laughter had broken out for like, I don't know how long, like at least... 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour, just continued to explode upon people. And it was so precious and beautiful. But this is who God is. It's not about all the stuff that we can do, but how are we doing it? Are we doing it with Him and in, in love, being unified, in integrity, and in honor, seeing Christ in each other? You see, there is even, I'll share this other story for... Um, a later part of the message. I'm going to get back into what I was sharing before. But think about that. You know. He said Lord, Lord. Didn't we do all these things in your name? And he says. I didn't know you. Think about that. Okay. So. It's important for us. To. Unite. With every denomination that confesses Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Even people that don't. Right. We can find things that we're unified on. But especially those 
who say that they confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Because once the body of Christ comes into a place of unity, integrity, and honor and love, something beautiful is going to begin to birth and take place. And we're going to find out what that is. Whether they believe in the gifts of the Spirit, miracles, or which day is the Sabbath, who cares? The adversary cares. Division is the game of the adversary, right? But that's why the Lord has made it so clear to stand united in love. My heart is to encourage people from every denomination to gather and focus on the common ground. That Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Who wouldn't want to gather around that and glorify our Lord Jesus Christ and worship Father God? Who wouldn't want to unify around that, right? That's a beautiful thing to focus on. That's what heaven's about. We're not going to focus on theology and, you know, doctrinal beliefs and all of the things that perhaps come into dispute today, right? And those things are great to discuss, but we must focus on unity, integrity, honor, and love, and worship our Heavenly Father and glorify the name of Jesus together. That's the focus. There doesn't need to be any preaching or teaching at these gatherings that right now what I'm doing is I'm describing. We need to begin to have these types of gatherings, right? Where, hey, we're going to gather. We're going to worship our Heavenly Father. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. And things are going to begin to shift and click and align in the spiritual realm, right? For an acceleration in the timeline of events that need to take place to see our precious Lord Jesus Christ come again, right? He's waiting on us, right? He's waiting on us. We're not waiting on Him, right? He's, he's seeing. Okay, well, they begin to move in this way that Malik is describing, right? Others are describing this too. They see it. They get it. But I received this specifically from the Lord, right? Fresh mana for me. And just get excited that, yes, when we have an intimate relationship with God, He shows us things that we can be a blessing to the people around us, right? And test this and, and, and confirm that, God, is this really from you? <laughs> You'll find it to be true. Okay. So at these gatherings that we can, we can just even invite our friends, right? Our friends from different backgrounds. Hey man, let's just get together and worship God, right? Let's do it. We're going to shift things in the spiritual realm, right? We're going to show people, hey, it's about unity, integrity, honor, and love. Have the small beginnings. Be faithful with the small beginnings, right? As the Spirit leads you. And we're going to see larger and larger gatherings, of people just uniting to worship God from all backgrounds. And it started, right? Worship Mob Jesus Co. That's a really great ministry that focuses on that. And, and I love what they're doing. It's so precious and beautiful. And there's other ministries that are focusing on that too. But we get to expand. We get to grow. We get to go above and beyond what's already taking place, right? And you get to be the leader that enforces that that. In, initiates that, that activates that. You have a role to play, right? Yes, you. Are you willing to play your role, right? Your life has value. Are you willing to ignite in the culture of the earth the value of this truth that's being released right now? Think about the value that can begin to birth forth as this is released to others as this is organized. Think about what that's going to release, right? In these gatherings, there doesn't need to be any teaching or preaching unless it's about unity and love, right? We can leave everything else at the wayside. As for prayer, no one needs a mic to go up and pray. We can pray at these gatherings, right? No one needs to pray on the mic in the front and, you know, just worship. Just Praise God, right? And if there's a message shared on unity and love, and we can all just pray together as one accord, right? Just as they were doing in the book of Acts, I'm sure, right? We can all pray in one accord at the same time. Community prayer. The first time I really experienced that was with Korean people. Oh my God, it was so precious and amazing. I was like, wow, this is awesome. Like, we're not taking turns. We're just going for it. Amen. I'm like, this is good stuff. 
And I don't have anything against, you know, people praying uh, in the front and one person praying at a time. That's great. I'm just saying we're doing a prophetic act of growing in unity and oneness. Let's just all pray together. Let's all worship together. Everything together. Our Father will hear us and see us and bless us, right? There have been many words spoken about stadium Christianity in the past. In my spirit, Prophet Bob Jones spoke that, right? And others as well, right? Stadium Christianity. In my spirit, I feel that these gatherings are for the church of Jesus Christ first, right? And will be a part of that prophecy becoming fulfilled. In those gatherings that will be filled with every denomination, people who don't believe in miracles will begin to be healed. What? Yes, because of the glory of God. Not because someone laid their hand and prayed for them, which is great. I believe in that. I love that. I do that. But because the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon them because of our unity, integrity, honor, and love. No separation. We're one. One faith, one baptism, one spirit. Those who do not speak in tongues will receive the gift of tongues by the power of the Holy Spirit. God will command a blessing upon the unity of the church of Jesus Christ. You see, no one's going to need to preach on the fullness that we've received, which is great. I love preaching and teaching. I'm doing it right now. But what I'm saying is the glory of God is going to be so powerfully moving within our midst that all of a sudden people are praying in tongues that never believed. People who are in wheelchairs, sickness, lumps in their throat from ulcers, just fully gone, dissolved. All the remedies that they need, they've received because the glory has expanded like never before. It's activated like never before. The glory is already here, right? Just like it says in the book of Habakkuk, right? It's covering the earth, but it gets activated upon our unity. We grow in the knowledge and understanding as we're loving each other as God loves us. But God commands a unity upon our blessing. <laughs> God commands a blessing on our unity. <laughs> oh, I love it. In Psalms 133, that's what it talks about. Behold, how good, how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment poured on the head that ran down the beard, even the beard of Aaron, the first high priest, that came down upon the collar and skirts of his garments, consecrating the whole body. It is like the dew of lofty Mount Hermon and the dew that comes on the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, even life forevermore upon the high and lowly. Just, just realize what has just been spoken, this beautiful ancient mystical truth, right? That behold, how good and pleasant is it for brethren, for brothers and sisters to dwell together. It is like the precious ointment poured on the head that ran down the beard. I wonder if Aaron's beard was as nice as this. <laughs> All right, let's get serious. But for real, as the oil runs down, right? And it says it's consecrating the whole body, right? When we unite together, Christ is our head. And that oil, as we unite in Him, in unity in Him, that oil just flows down and the blessing comes upon us. That blessing is coming upon us right now. I feel the Shekinah glory of God right now, birthing upon us, right? Healing, forgiveness, discernment, clarity, strength, wisdom, so many things are being birthed right now. And imagine that as we unite together, the blessing the Lord will pour upon us. It's going to be so powerful. It's going to birth so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Just even now, listen to what the Lord is telling you. Listen with an attentive ear. Give your attention to the Lord right now. What is He telling you to focus on, to do? 
to behold. You see, if Christ gave himself for all of us, right? He did that from a place of love and unity. To be like Christ, to be like God, we're filled with the virtues of God. And as we're revelating today with each other, we're growing in our understanding. Hallelujah. We're almost towards the finish line, yeah? So as we move into fulfillment of this command to love, it will lead the church of Jesus Christ into greater glory. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 19, it says, And I pray you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all of the fullness of God. Who wants to move into the greater glory, right? Who wants to be able to perform greater signs, wonders, healings, and miracles, right? This is the key. The Bible just said it, that if you can grow in this love that surpasses knowledge, right? Our earthly knowledge, right? And of understanding what love really is, God's love surpasses that. And how do we press into it? How do we grasp it? Ephesians is telling us how wide and long and high and deep. It's making a cross, right? When we realize the cross, we realize the depth of that love. And that's what he's praying, that you'll be established in love. Then you can have power, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. This is the key. This is the key. This is how we press into greater things that Jesus Christ promised us. To know the love of Christ is one thing, but to release it and to live by it unlocks the fullness of God that dwells within us. We're so close to the finish line. This is where things get even more exciting because, you know, okay, yeah, let me just wait. Whoa, <laughs> let me just wait. So before I get to that, I'm going to share a quick story, right? Um, in a book called The Final Quest by Rick Joyner, he had a series of encounters with the Lord. And this particular encounter that I'm going to paraphrase, right, with, a, 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 I'm not going to say 100% level of accuracy. It may be, right, because I've really enjoyed this story and it's been transformational in my life. And it does a great job of, you know, confirming and expanding on what I'm sharing now. So in his encounter, the Lord began to tell Rick Joyner about two different people. One specific person made many disciples, preached and taught and uh, served the poor, right? He did great things for the kingdom, right? And there was this other guy. One day he was walking on a street and on the sidewalk, a cat got in his way and he almost kicked that cat, but right at the end just decided, I'm just gonna nudge the cat to the side and continue to walk. And the Lord asked, who do I approve of more? And we're just using that word approve for this particular example because we know that we're only approved by the blood of Jesus, right? And because of that, accepting him, we have been able to have salvation, eternal life, the Zoe life, right? Long lasting, right? The fullness. But in this particular case, the Lord was saying, who is more approved in my eyes. You see, the person that made many disciples who evangelized much, discipled many people, served the poor, he understood a revelation of God's love to 74%. He understood 74% of God's love, but only used 50% to love other people. This other guy who was living on the streets, right, who was homeless, he understood 4% of God's love. And that day when he came across that cat, he used all 4% to not kick that cat and just move it to the side. So when I originally was asking myself this question, who is approved of more? Obviously the one who did all the stuff would seem like the right answer, but the fact that the Lord is explaining both of these individuals leads me to believe there's more to understand. To those who have been given, much will be expected and required. It's the parable of the talents. How are you using what you've been given? 
Are you giving the fullness away of what you've been taught, what you've experienced? Are you holding back? Are you unconditionally loving or are you putting up boundaries? You see, the one that understood 4% gave it all away. The person that understood 74% only used 50. And both of these individuals had already passed the earthly realm and were established in their heavenly glory when Rick Joyner had this encounter with the Lord and saw the glory of the thrones that they have been given to steward in heaven, right? The territories that they've been given to have dominion over in heaven. And though both were great, the one who used all of the love, he said the glory that was on his throne was so expansive. I had yet to see something quite like that from all of the saints I encountered in the heavenly realms. Rick Joyner was saying this. Isn't that powerful? It's not about how many people you saved, how many books you've written, how many countries you've gone to, right? It's not about any of that. All that stuff is great. It's fantastic. It's so precious. But even like the Lord told his disciples, I didn't know you. If you're not doing it with him, if you're not doing it with love, the fullness of love. You see, God, Jesus Christ, didn't love with just 50%, with 70%. He loved with 100%. That's what he's teaching us, right? To love with the fullness of what I've given you, whatever I've given you, use it and more will be added. You see, that person, he only saved one individual in his whole life. When he came to know Jesus Christ, he was so moved with his love that he was like, I want to save other people. I want to bring salvation to other people. And the Lord said he was so hungry and desiring to do so much good for others that, and he wasn't great at it. He wasn't, you know, perhaps equipped and skilled. And the Lord said, I gave him one. I gave him one person because he tried so hard, right? He tried so hard. I gave him one person. He brought one person to the Lord. And he died by giving his body for war for another woman that was perhaps freezing to death, right? He gave himself as a living sacrifice. Love, integrity, honor. Being unified with each other. This is what it's about. Amazing story, right? I hope that blesses you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your sweetness. Once this unity is established and this love is established, our Lord Jesus Christ will come to the earth again. What's circulating in the church of Jesus Christ currently is to fulfill the great commission for the coming of our Lord Jesus Though we need to play our part to fulfill the Great Commission, that's not the final factor for our Lord to come again. Once the Church of Jesus Christ stands united in love, an angel will come to preach the eternal gospel. Do you believe that? Did you know that the Bible actually says that? The Bible says that an angel is going to come and fulfill preaching the gospel to every nation, every tribe, every tongue. It's not just something that we are called to do, but there's a heavenly partnership. If we do our part, grow in unity, integrity, honor, and love while we're making disciples of all nations, then the heavenly partnership comes into an effect and an acceleration takes place. We can see that clearly. It's in the Bible. Turn to your Bible. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through 7. It says, Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give Him glory, because the hour of His judgment has come. Worship who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Whoa! It's <laughs> my pastor Kirby Delano when he revelates on the word, he'll be like, Is it there? Is it there? <laughs> and so that's what I'm, I'm feeling the unction to say, right? Is it there? It's in the Bible. Revelations chapter 14, verse 6 through 7. Then I saw another angel flying in the midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, every nation, every tribe, language, and people. You see, if we do our part, this angel is going to come and whoosh, over the entire universe, this gospel is going to go forward in a loud voice. 
wow, this is pretty clear. We're not alone when it comes to proclaiming the eternal gospel. We have a heavenly partnership. Let's do our part. You know what our part is. I've, I've broken it down very well. You see, once that takes place and that angel comes and every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every language understands the gospel, right? Has heard it so they can make a decision. Revelations 14, verse 14 through 16 comes into an effect where it says, I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. And another angel came out of the temple and called out in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, take your sickle and reap because the time to reap has come for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who has seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth and the earth was harvested. This is what the Lord is waiting on for us to come into unity, integrity, honor, and love. That angel is going to come, fulfill the great commission, and then our Lord is going to come and harvest. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. He's waiting on us. Once the angel of the Lord preaches the eternal gospel, we enter into an acceleration and our Lord Jesus Christ will come to reap the harvest. The harvest is ripe right now, people of God, but the people of the harvest are waiting to meet with God face to face. You see, the harvest is ripe, but the people of the harvest who are waiting to be harvest, they are waiting to meet with God face to face. They want to see God. You see, how will the lost meet Father God face to face? There are many ways God can reveal himself. He's very creative. Let's look at this last scripture. In John chapter 14, verse 9, it says, Anyone who has seen me, Jesus is saying this, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Are you doing your part, friend, brother, sister? Are you doing your part, sons and daughters of the Most High God? Are you living from the overflow of love? of our Heavenly Father. From that overflow of the Father's love, from the baptism of love, when anyone sees you, they will see the Father. You see, because Christ lives in us, right? We're one with Christ. So when Christ said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, Jesus is saying, if anyone sees you, they will see the Father. If anyone sees me, they're seeing the Father. If I'm living through the full union that I have with Christ, that love being the key and focus of how I'm breathing, thinking, and experiencing life, and I grow into the full measure of God, people are meeting me. The full measure, right? When people meet me, they're meeting God in me. Christ is living in all and through all. This is really really precious and beautiful to think about and to grow in love should be our desire there's a, a biblical revelatory series i've created on the agape abundant love of jesus christ habibi it's arabic for love right amor espanol spanish for love piar it's urdu for love you see love isn't a language but it's an emotion it's a feeling it's something we can experience Experience. Whoa. And so I'm going to leave the link for that in the description below to check out. Whoa, I'm getting really drunk right now. Whoa, thank you, Lord. It's amazing. You're amazing, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to get off of this uh, broadcast so I can enjoy this with the Lord. Bless you. Thank you so much for checking this message out. And please, ah, this is one thing that I really want you to do. Share this message. This message needs to go out, right? Needs to go out and bless the people of God to realize the truth, right? Don't you want to see Jesus again? How amazing would that be? 
if we can grow in unity, integrity, honor, and love, wow. I mean, <laughs> this is it. So on November 16th, 2022, at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, whoa. Wow, it's just like waterfalls. Waterfalls of glory. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I'm hosting the second Hearing God's Voice, tuning into the frequency of how God speaks and the vastness of how He communicates. In this particular session, we're going to get a chance to identify where we specifically want to grow deeper into hearing God's voice and also expand on the seer realm collectively. So get excited. So many great things happened the first time. People were activated in the seer realm, words of knowledge realm, healings broke out. It was amazing, right? And people began to prophesy accurately over each other and were encouraged that they can hear God's voice. Imagine being guided by the Spirit of God in finances, in spiritual life, in relationships. In every aspect of our existence, we can be led by the Spirit of God. And so... Yeah, bless you, love you, thank you so much, and uh, I hope to see you on November 16th, and reach out to me, I'm here for you, uh, rebranding time, the focus of what we do is helping people celebrate their culture, their identity, and helping them tap into their purpose, and that's why I have an array of different teachings to help people tap into the fullness of who they are, and love being a, a, such a key component of that, and so, yeah, if there's anything I can do for you, to impact your life, please reach out. I'm here to serve you. Mwah. Love you. Bless you. Ciao.